In the last episode, we covered the political discussions happening between China, Korea, and Japan, which resulted in Hideyoshi making the decision that there would be a second invasion. We also touched on some of the things happening between Yi Soon Sin and Wan Kyun. And that's where we'll continue this week, because the Great Admiral has a target on his back. I'm Stefan, and this is Japan at War. After last episode, it shouldn't come to anyone's surprise that Supreme Naval Commander Yi Soon Sin had lost a lot of the support he had in Seoul's government by the summer of 1596. Yi Sun Sin's, I guess you'd call it downfall, started from the very start of the war. The Kyongsang right Navy commander Wan Kyun did not like Yi and didn't trust him. Before Yi Sun Sin had been appointed as naval commander, he was a lesser garrison commander of Joseon. So when he got his position, he had no experience in naval warfare. And it was quite a jump as far as rank goes. Naturally, he would get a lot of resentment from that alone. Wan Kyun would naturally be one of those with resentment issues, and it probably didn't help that he held his position longer and was technically his equal when the war broke out. But it didn't end up that way. As I mentioned in the last episode, Wan had been bombarding the government of Seoul with report of Yi Soon Sin's misconduct, such as not obeying orders to attack Japanese positions. But a lot of these same people giving him these orders just didn't understand that these attacks could result, and I believe would have resulted, in major losses for his fleet given Japan's current strategy. The issues between Yi Sun Sin and Wan Kyun got so bad that it would force Yi in 1594 to request the transfer. Wan Kyun, however, would be the one to get transferred though, as they didn't feel that they could replace Yi just yet. First as Chungcheong army commander and later as commander of the Chola army. And even then, Wan Kyun would tell anyone who would listen just how ineffective Yi Soon Sin was in his current position. From the government's point of view, he indeed was refusing to fight, and they started to question his commitment. In 1592, he had almost single handedly ended Japanese seaward expansion. But now, wasn't attacking with the same aggression as before. So perhaps Wan Kyun was right? July of 1592, several court decisions were held where the leadership of the Western political faction suggested to the Korean King Sanjo to dismiss Yi Soon Sin and appoint Wan Kyun in his place. The king wasn't really ready to consider this, and their arguments weren't very convincing at first. By December, he was starting to consider their proposals, though. The peace negotiations were failing, and there was now incredible fear in the Korean government that a second Japanese invasion was coming. The third minister of war, Induk, took advantage of this by mentioning Yi Sun Sin's current record of not attacking and Wan Kyun's pre-war record as an army officer on the northern border with King Sanjo conceding that, yes, Wan Kyun actually did seem like a brave man. On December 25th, during these court discussions, things went even more in Wan Kyun's favor, as there was more suggestions to return Wan back to his original post at the very least. The discussions then shifted into Yi Sun Sin being a glory hog and a ton of misinformation about the battles that they engaged in together. Now, for warning, this next bit is a little sketchy. I haven't been able to find out much, so please take it with a grain of salt. At the beginning of 1597, the vanguard of Hideyoshi's second invasion was making its preparations to make its way into Korea. While this was happening, a man named Yojiro appeared in the Kyongsang right army commander Kim Ung So's camp. Now, Yojiro was known as something of a double agent. First, the man was a native of Tsushima, which was already pretty close to Korea. He was also fluent in both Korean and Japanese, and he was known for wanting to settle in Korea itself. Now, because of all this, he was pretty well known by Kim Ung So and his men, and allowed to say what he had to say. Yojiro went on that he had a secret message from Konishi Yukinaga. He said that Konishi blamed Kato Kiyomasa for the failed peace negotiations, 
and was ready to put an end to him once and for all. Kato Kiyomasa was preparing to launch his ships for the second invasion and would have to pass by a certain island on his way to Busan with his fresh troops. Yojiro then provided the exact date and time that he was supposed to pass. All that the Koreans would have to do was launch its navy and ambush him, killing not only one of Hideyoshi's greatest generals and getting a red of a lot of soldiers, but it would also do Konishi a favor as well. Army Commander Kim Eung so believed him and took the information to Commander in Chief Kwon Yul, who also believed this story, and endorsed the report and brought it to the attention of the government in Seoul. There was a small debate in the government, but in the end, they agreed that this information had to be true, and orders were sent south to Yi Soon Sin to get his ships ready to intercept Kato Kiyomasa while he was at sea. Yi Soon Sin was suspicious of this information, though. To him, it sounded like a trap, and so he delayed launching his ships. Army Commander Kim Eung So, who did believe the information correct, was furious and proceeded to inform Seoul of Yi's refusal to act. Commander in Chief Kwon Yul was also annoyed at Yi Soon Sin's delays. So on March 8th, he went in person to Hassan Island and ordered Yi to set sail. Yi responded that even if this Yojiro was correct, it wasn't worth risking his ships in an area infested with rocks, at a place of the enemy's choosing. And that's even if this was not a trap. The commander-in-chief didn't agree with the assessment and commanded him to follow orders, and he did indeed set sail. It didn't matter though, Yojiro appeared once again at Kim Eung So's camp with the news that Kato Kiyomasa had arrived safely at Busan. Now this part is rather strange, as Kato had indeed arrived, but on March the 1st, which was one week before Kwon Yul had ordered him to set sail. Yojiro is also said to have said that Yi had wasted a great opportunity and it seems was working his hardest to get Kim Eung So upset. He was successful, of course. Yeah, I'm not sure what this man had to gain from all this. Leave me your thoughts down below. In Seoul, the government was enraged. From what I can tell, no one there seems to have considered that, you know, perhaps Yi was right. The situation was suspect, after all, at best. There was also several arguments that broke out in Seoul's court, but they all seemed to be in agreement. Yi Soon Sin had to go. On March 14th, 1597, they acted. The king believed that there could be no forgiveness, saying, How can we accept a commander who, because he refuses to obey orders, sets himself above the throne? Now, some wanted him in chains. Others just want him removed. And of course, many were wanting Wan Kyun installed as the naval commander. At first, Yi Soon Sin was simply supposed to be relieved of command, but several protested the idea and bombarded the king with letters. Now, eventually, they did get their way, and the king relented and sent an official to put Yi Soon Sin under arrest. On April 12th, the official arrived. On the same day, he was bound in ropes, and Wan Kyun was put in command. He was released from imprisonment on May 16th and on the 18th entered Kwon Yul's service as a common soldier. Kwon Yul would keep him nearby as a guard. And this is where I will leave you, the great naval commander Yi Soon Sin reduced to a simple soldier, and Wan Kyun getting exactly what he wanted. I'll see you next time.